Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Tex-Mex Meatloaf Fatty. Well today we're gonna do something that I like to do often on this channel and that's take multiple food items and smash them together into one recipe. In this case, we're gonna put Tex-Mex flavors on a meatloaf and roll it up and smoke it like a sausage fatty. Now it's not technically a sausage fatty and it's not gonna be in meat loaf form, but instead of telling you what it's not, I'll tell you what it is and that's delicious. Now, one of the components to our meatloaf is an enchilada sauce that we're making from scratch. So let's start there. So we're gonna start by toasting off our dried chilies and we're using three different chilies today. That's an ancho, there's some pasilla and a chipotle. And we're just gonna toast these just until they start to soften a little bit and become fragrant. So just about 30 to 60 seconds. You can already see these are getting much more pliable. We're gonna flip these over and do the same thing to the other side. And we're just kind of waking up all these flavors and starting to soften up the chilies. All right, so another 30 to 60 seconds until you feel like you've got just the right amount of like pliability in them. And then we're gonna cover these with two cups of beef stock. I'm gonna bring that all the way up to a simmer. And then when it hits a simmer, we're gonna shut this off and just let them sit for about 10 minutes. Now also going into our enchilada sauce is a quarter of a white onion. Just gonna give that a rough chop. And then a couple cloves of garlic. These we just need to crush them and peel them. And then we're gonna throw everything in the blender. All right, let's shut this off. We'll cover it and let those peppers just kind of start to rehydrate in the beef stock. All right, these should be softened up now. They're looking nice. They're gonna go right into the blender along with our onion and garlic. And then we're gonna use this beef stock also kind of as a, the main component or base as far as the liquid goes in this sauce. And we just wanna strain this off so we can get any of those seeds out of there. And then we got a couple seasonings to add. You're gonna do two teaspoons of the Cattleman's Mexicano. It's your favorite taco seasoning. And then just a pinch of allspice. All right, so that should be completely smooth now. I don't wanna to breathe too deep. It's gonna be spicy air, spicy air. It smells incredible. All right, so what we wanna do now is we're gonna thicken this up, and we're gonna do that using a roux. So you're gonna put your fat in first and get that melted down. Today we're using lard, but you could use butter, you could use oil, you could use tallow if you like. Once that's melted, we can add our flour. If you're trying to avoid uh, flour, you don't wanna use a roux, you could definitely thicken this with cornstarch as well or even with like a masa corn powder type thing. So let's get our flour in there. I'm gonna toast that flour just a little bit. We'll just start to darken just a little, get that tan color, it's gonna smell a little bit nutty, definitely becomes aromatic. That's where we're at now, and that's the point where we can start to pour in our enchilada sauce. So we're just gonna bring this up to a simmer, one to thicken it and two to kind of roast some of those vegetables, that onion, that garlic that's raw in there right now. I'll let this kind of simmer away for the next five to 10 minutes. All right, it's been about 10 minutes now. You can see that sauce is really thickened up. We're gonna need to add a little bit of salt, so let's get a taste and see where we're at on that. Oh man, it's so earthy. Great chili flavor, but it does need that bit of salt just to kind of bring all those flavors all the way forward and balance everything out. Yes. All right, so we are done with enchilada sauce. Now before we get to assembling the meatloaf, we need to fire up the grill. And today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Classic 3. All right, so we're gonna load this up with some lump charcoal. We're not gonna overflow it. We're gonna leave some room for, for air. It's all about the airflow here. Now we're doing direct and indirect grilling today, so we're gonna leave the slow roller in, but we're not gonna put the top on because we don't wanna damage that. So we're gonna start with a direct setup. We just need to get this charcoal lit up, and we can do our direct grilling right here in the center and then switch to an indirect. 
the charcoal is taken off at temperature. It's pushing 500, which is great. I'm gonna rake these around just a little bit. And then we're gonna start with our grates at the lower level here as we do our direct grilling. I'm gonna throw on here a couple ears of corn and some Anaheim peppers. Yeah, yeah, I like it like that. I'm gonna roll our corn around. That is the kind of color that we're looking for, just a little bit of char. Start to soften these up. Now the peppers are actually gonna get all the way black because we wanna be able to steam those and peel the skins off. All right, corn's looking good. Got a nice blister, a little color on there. I'm gonna pull those off. Give the peppers a flip. A little bit more time to blacken on all sides. So we got blistered all over the skin here. We can pull this guy off. We're waiting on one spot to finish up on this bigger one. All right, ready to pull this guy off. We're gonna throw it into a bag that we can seal up so that these can steam and let that skin really separate from the flesh. So now we're gonna go ahead and set up for indirect. Get that plate in place. Right on the lip. This time we're going on the highest setting of the divide and conquer system. Give us just a little bit more distance from the heat. We'll close this up. We want to stabilize around 350. So now we're going to do a little knife work. We're going to take the corn kernels off the cob. We're looking for I mean, you can use both of these, but it's gonna come out to half cup, maybe a little bit more. You don't have to be super precise with this. Let's get these Anaheims peeled up now. Take any seeds out from inside. And with any luck, it should just pull right off of the skin. So we're just gonna dice these up into small pieces. Uh, if you don't wanna go through this part I mean, you absolutely can just buy a can of green chilies at the store, but I guarantee it's not gonna taste this good. Next, we're gonna do some green onions. We're gonna slice up about a half cup. Just use the green tops of these since we're not cooking that bottom part. Next, we're gonna do some garlic. I'm just gonna grate it down really fine so it melts right into the meatloaf. I want about one tablespoon of this garlic paste. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some tortilla chips, some corn tortilla chips, and crunch these up. But this is kind of gonna act as a binder for our meatloaf. But a lot of times you'll have people that put in breadcrumbs or even oats in their meatloaf, maybe an egg that all acts to kind of bind things together. But we're not gonna do an egg today. We're not gonna do breadcrumbs, but we are gonna do tortilla chips. That'll sort of serve the same purpose while also adding this corn flavor to the meatloaf. And then instead of doing an egg, we're gonna do a primary bind by mixing this together on the stand mixer. I'm gonna bring everything together in the mixing bowl. We're using these uh, Cattleman's Grill. These are their burger pucks. So this is a brisket blend ground beef. We're gonna put two pounds in here. I'm gonna add a half cup of black beans. We've got a half cup of those crushed tortilla chips. I'm gonna do three quarter cup of that enchilada sauce that we made earlier. One, two, three. And then all of the veggies that we just did all the knife work on. So you got your green chilies, got your corn, green onions, and the garlic. And we're gonna season it up with three tablespoons of our Cattleman's Grill Mexicano. So paddle attachment on the stand mixer. Start slow, just to get everything mixed. And then we're gonna crank up the speed. It's just like if we were making sausage. You're working this manually to create that primary bind which causes this to stick together. So this is where we kind of blur the line between meatloaf and sausage fatty. So I'm starting to see this hold together. And that's what we're looking for. 
when I pick it up, it shouldn't immediately fall apart. And we're there. All right, so next step, we're laying out some plastic wrap. We're gonna form this essentially into a sausage chub. Roll this out, kind of form it into that, that sausage chub shape. Then we're gonna let the plastic wrap do the hard work. All the way over and seal it up, roll and twist. We'll cinch this down, it gets tighter and tighter. And then I'm gonna let this chill out in the fridge for about, I'm gonna say like 20 to 30 minutes just so I know that it's not warming up too much. Our meatloaf fatty is chilled down now. It's solidified a bit, which is gonna make it easier to work with. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wrap it in a frog mat, tie it up, and then we'll throw it onto the grill. So we're gonna take this out of the plastic now, unrolling it here onto the frog mat. This frog mat is just a silicone coated, so it's non-stick. Uh, woven mat for indirect grilling. It's going to help us keep the shape. We'll roll that up tight. We got just about the right size to fill this thing out. And then we're going to take some twine, tie it around here, a few places to hold it. Meatloaf's gonna shrink up a little bit so you can tie it pretty tight. All right, let's head over to the grill. Before we do this, I'm gonna get a chunk of hickory down into the coals. We're cooking at about 350 degrees, but I wanna make sure that we can still add some smoke flavor. Got the smoke rolling already, I can smell it. All right. So indirect heat now at 350 degrees until we reach an internal temperature of about 160. All right, so right about an hour into the cook now, our fatty has come up to almost 160. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna unravel this thing. We're gonna finish it off. And we're gonna finish this in a pan because we wanna top it off with some more enchilada sauce and some cheese. So let's unroll this guy. Oh man, look at that smoke. You can see the smoke on the outside. It's beautiful. So we're gonna come across the top with some more of that enchilada sauce. So then we've got two cheeses. We're going 50-50 with the sharp cheddar and the queso chihuahua. Right on top. And then we're gonna do sliced jalapenos, thin sliced, just to finish it off. So at this point, I'm going to close the lid up. I'm gonna completely cut off our airflow up top and completely open it at the bottom. Now we've trapped all of that heat in the dome for the last 10 minutes. It's melted the cheese on top. We're ready to pull this off. All right, so this is about, we're gonna do eight servings out of this. So we'll make our first slice here. Fan that open and take a look at it. Oh boy, that's juicy. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, let's get a bite here. Get some of that cheese topping. Mmm. Man, it comes across as meatloaf. That's for sure. It's super moist and smoky. Like, tasting that smoke for sure. I like the texture changes in there with the corn. You bite in that corn, you get that fresh burst and the enchilada sauce. Super earthy, slight chili heat, but it's not spicy. Really nicely balanced, I think. I love that smoke flavor. 
But one of the great things about this right here is there's a number of ways to serve it. I mean, you can eat it just like it is for sure, but you serve it on top of some rice or put it on a plate, give it the taco treatment, cover it in a slice of tomato, you get some shredded lettuce, a little sour cream, a little uh, guacamole. All of these things would go great. You even chop it up and put it in a taco. Will it taco? I believe it will. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.